You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Everybody, we're joined by Rick Western, our coach Chris Paul. We'll start with an, open, with an opening statement and then take questions, Coach. Yeah, I uh, just credit Maryland today. Um, they beat us. I mean, um, you know, I thought our guys came into the game. We were really excited about the game. We knew it was going to be a high-level NCAA type game with two teams that have been playing really well. Um, you know, you play a team that's nine and zero at home in the league, so you know what you're going to be up against. Um, I've certainly been in here many years and uh, know how hard it is to play in this building. Um, and give them credit. You know, I thought they did a good job. You know, for 20 minutes, I thought we played pretty well. Uh, you know, the defense, they were scoring, they were shooting the ball, lights out, I mean, 14 threes, you got to tip your cap. Uh, some of them were breakdowns of us, but a lot of them were late clock guys just stepping up, making a shot, you know, or end of half, you know, two guys on Jamiri just hits a step back, or, you know, Martinez making three threes, you know, which really isn't the strength of his game. He's a good player, but, you know, banging three threes, he banked one in. So, you know, you got to tip your cap to those guys for their shot making. Uh, they have a good team, they're difficult to guard. Jameer's really good, um, you know, but also what Dante and, and uh, Hakeem can do, they're big wings that can handle the ball and, and back you down and post and good passers. So they present a lot of problems. Julian uh, Reese is playing great, double-double. So um, just they played, they, they deserve to win. You know, they outplayed us in the second half. We couldn't keep up with the scoring. You know, it was kind of back and forth in the first half. Both teams were scoring 41-39. And then they were able to get the stops in the second half. We went we went cold, you know, credit them for a lot of it. And then when we did get looks, we weren't able, you know, to kind of stem the tide by making some shots. So I think we had three or four that were like, I thought, in and out. You know, we're halfway down. And that happens. It's basketball. So uh, Kevin's doing a great job. They, they got a heck of a team. It was, a, you know, it was a good win for them. And, you know, for us, you know, it's, it's this league is hard. You know, I mean, it's, uh, you play good teams. We're not down in any way. We're still excited we got a big week coming up again and um you know you just got to learn from these games and go home and, and try to make it right when you get another opportunity to play i think the first thing that has to be proved by the lawyer on behalf of any client who's injured their neck or back is that the client was hurt and they were hurt in this accident and even though they had pre-existing pre problems the damage to this individual client is much worse now after the crash than it was before. We do that with pain and suffering witnesses. We do that with doctors that know the individual patient. Questions? What did Maryland do that so effective on food and that? Well, I think what they do is, um, you know, they, the way they play defense, um, it makes it very hard for you to like run your plays, you know, with the, with the matchup zone, with the pressure. You know, it's one of those teams where you have to make plays. You know, you got to find the open areas. It's it's really hard for you to, to run a lot of sets against them because of the way they switch and zone and man and they match up. They do a good job of kind of so you can't if you're worried about what they're in. You know, they can really paralyze you. But they have good quickness. They have good size. I thought they were making him be a passer. And Boo had seven assists at half. You know, I, I, I actually credited him. I thought he was playing right. You know, he was getting into the paint and they were making a pass and he had seven assists. You know, second half, you know, I thought we got a little bit stagnant. The ball stuck a little bit more. And it was obvious like they were they were gonna try to take him away. And you know, when that happens, you know, Chase had his moments where he stepped up and kind of, you know, held the offense, but that's where our supporting cast has to continue to when they get those looks, whether it's Robbie Bear and Ty Berry. Brooks Barnheiser, you know, the big guys, you know, they got to do a good job. But um, credit their defense. You know, I thought they were swarming. Uh, they keep that constant pressure on you all that came long to get, to get into your legs a little bit. And, and then they scatter the game. They make you make plays. And, and we didn't do the job we needed to be able to keep up. Uh, Chris, what do you make of the traffic jam towards the top of the league this year? And how exciting is it to be part of it playing such meaningful games here in like February, early March? Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, I, I just think there's so many good teams, you know, and, and so many great atmospheres. You know, I mean, everywhere you go when you play on the road, um, it's incredibly difficult to win. I mean, we feel fortunate. I mean, we have five road wins, which, you know, which, you know, it's pretty amazing considering all the good teams uh, in this league. Um, you know, it doesn't matter who you play, where you play, and you got to be ready to go. You got to play at a really high level. Like, I thought, you know, we're. 
we feel good about who we are. We're a good team. We feel like we belong. We feel we can compete. But we got beat today, you know, by a team that played better, you know, and, and had, you know, just got to the balls quicker, made 14 of 22 threes. And I told our guys, you know, like, we've just had a stretch of about six or seven in a row where every single one of those teams are going to play in the NCAA tournament. And so this has got to hopefully, you know, make you better as long as you allow, like, everybody's going to lose a little bit. I mean, the best team in the league who's winning the league has lost four of their last five. So, I mean, it shows the... It shows the the strength of this league, um, you know that that everybody's good. You know you're going to see a lot of teams in the tournament, which is awesome. And uh, the 20 game season, I was telling Kevin before, he's kind of going through it for the first time, and he's doing it beautifully. He's he's done a remarkable job with his team. But you you see when you go through this 20 game Big Ten sit season, man, it's it's a grind because all these teams are good. You play in every third day. You got to be ready to go. Great coaches, great players, great atmospheres. And for us, it's just exciting. You know, it's been a few years since we've been in that mix. You know, we've kind of been trying to play for pride, you know, at the end of the season and get a few wins for us to be an NCAA Bowl tournament team, to be still tied for second place. I mean, after after 18 games, if you would have said to me before the year, you're going to be tied for second, probably would have signed up for it. Now, it uh, didn't feel so good today getting beat, but got to go home and try to make it right on the next one. Uh, Coach, you mentioned the three-point shooting. And some of your team's tougher losses is you have teams that really shot well. Yeah. Uh, what sorts of adjustments do you think you guys need to make to make sure this doesn't happen again? Though? Yeah, I mean, to your point, yeah. I mean, I, I think some of them were some breakdowns where we lost guys. Um, I would venture to say maybe six or seven of those 14, it was just really good shot making. Like I said, the three at the end, I don't know what you do, the three at the end of the half. I mean, we had two guys on Jameer. You know, he hits a step back, 27 footer. Um, you know, Ian Martinez banks in a three. At the end of the shot clock, Carey, you know, hit some big shots late in clock. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, it's we, we've been very aggressive in terms of the post ups. I give them credit. I thought they moved the ball well. You know, for us, we've been a team that's turned people over. You know, and for those guys who only have seven turnovers, it's a credit to how they took care of the ball. and got out of the traps and found the right guys. And then still at the end of the day, you got to make the shot and, you know, give those guys credit. I mean, Kerry Martinez, Kerry Martinez combined for seven of 10 from three. You know, I mean, you look at the number, you know, and that's not to knock them. They're really good team players, but that that hasn't really been what they've done. So sometimes you got to tip your cap to uh, to shot making and, and a good team that beat you today. And, and we got to watch the film and, and hopefully try to do a better job because we play Penn State next. and. They're, that's what they do. You know, they're a great three-point shooting team, so we're gonna have to be better on that end. Coach, you mentioned atmosphere a few times. Can you compare today's type of game where you came in with a lot on the line to your former trips here uh, in the ACC days? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, I've always had great respect. You know, I mean, obviously being a part of Duke for, you know, 17 years, you know, four as a player. I'm old enough where I played in cold, you know, so, uh, you know, it's it's always been a special place to play. I'm, I love the game, so this this environment is special to me. I think it's one of the better atmospheres you play in. Uh, it's got a great fan base. You know, their students are into the game. They, they get after the opposing team. To me, it's fun. I mean, I've, I've always really enjoyed that. And, you know, for us, we haven't been good enough the last couple of years probably to kind of warrant, you know, that kind of spirited crowd. but. You know, I think for the way the crowd, they knew this was a high-level game. That they knew there was a lot on the line for both teams here late in the season. It was loud. They were they were getting after it, and um, I've always enjoyed playing here. You know, I, it's a hard place to play, but but I love playing in tough venues, and, and this one ranks up there. You know, it's right up there with the best I've been in. You know, and, and through my years. Hey, coach, you talked about how good of a job defensively Maryland did on Bowie. What was Maryland doing right, in your opinion, in the second half on Adish only at two points? Yeah, I just thought with both of our guards, I thought there was just a heavy awareness, you know, on those guys when they tried to drive. They didn't have a whole lot of space. You know, they they, they switch well. They kind of compact in their little matchup zone they play. And they were forcing those guys to be playing, but to be passers. You know, I mean, that was that was obvious. When the, when they did get into the teeth of the defense, they were really overplaying and, and making those guys be passers. And, and we didn't do a good enough job. In the first half, we did. You know, we made some shots. Um, some other guys, our big up Matt, I think, had four or five baskets in the first half on rolls. You know, we were moving the ball pretty well. And then I thought the second half, maybe as our legs got a little bit tired, as we weren't as, as sharp, you know, they just did a really good job making those guys give the ball up. And um, like I said, we got to play right. If that's going to be the case, 
we got the ball's got to find the other guys, and we have belief that those other guys can make people pay. We just didn't do it, you know. In the second half, um, we we're one one for nine from three, you know. In the second half, a lot of those were open, you know, and and some of those were in and out. And that's basketball, though. You know, sometimes you don't shoot the ball as well, and we got to be better in those areas because good teams are going to try to take our guards away. I mean, they're they're good players. You know, coaches know what they're doing in this league, and if they're going to do that, we got to be ready to, to have other guys make them pay. Uh, when you were prepared for this game, watching film, how different did Maryland look at home versus on the road? And obviously, you knew you had to play them here, but what were some of the things that stood out with what they did? Yeah, I, I just tried to really focus on their home games because that's who we were going to face. You know, not getting a chance to see them in Walsh Ryan. I know they've looking at the numbers and their splits. And I can't explain it because I think they're really good. But obviously, they, they feed off the energy of this crowd. Um, you know, the press is a little bit more effective at home. You know, I, I think with their, their activity, um, their shooting. I mean, of course, 14 of 22 from three. So uh, there's, there's a lot of teams like that where, you know, um, you, you hope to. But also, the other thing is it's hard to win on the road in this league. I mean, it's, you know, no one's like just sweeping through the league and winning every game because it's really hard to go into these atmospheres and win. But they have great energy. They feed off their crowd. Um, they have a good scheme. You know, it's, it's, they play kind of a different style than, than pretty much everybody else in our conference. So, you know, you, you have to really take time to prepare for their pressure, prepare for their zone, prepare for the mixing and matching of defenses. So it's a little bit tougher prep because I think they have a different style and they've found that and they've done a really good job in kind of creating their own identity with how they play. Coach, uh, I'm over up to watch when you played and uh, you always play hard, you coach hard. That's just a comment. Thank you. And I always appreciated it. Uh, the question is, your, your two guards uh, between you were, were uh, two for 17. I can't imagine that happens very often. Yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, hopefully it's a one-off, you know, where uh, that, that's not going to happen because we won't win very much, you know, if that's the case. Um, what we do have to do, though, is, is we have been a team that has found a way to win when we maybe haven't shot it as well. And you know we, we didn't give our, ourselves a chance by giving up 75 points today. I mean, 41 in the first half, too much. Um, thought our energy got a little bit better in the second half. But again, 75 on the road, that's not going to be a recipe for us to win. But, but to your point, um, we just got to you know, make sure we're, we're doing things right, we're playing right. Um, the other team has a lot to do with that. You know, I'm, I'm always one of these guys. I'm, I'm not big on when everybody come, coaches will come in here and talk about all the things they didn't do well. You know, it, a lot of it had to do with Maryland. They just beat us today. You know, I, I've, I, they are a good team, and they did a lot of good things. They made shots. They defended us well. They were physical. So a lot of it had to do with them. And then we'll look at the film and see, you know, the areas where we did have our breakdowns or areas maybe we could have attacked better uh, as we move forward. But, you know, I think the story of this game was how well Maryland played because they, they were better than us today, and they deserved to win. All right, that'll wrap us up. Thank you.